So I was kind of thinking about doing another horror Blu-rays I want you to own. And when looking at my shelf and figuring out what was still in print and what wasn't, I realized that there was a movie that I've never reviewed or really talked about in depth before that is still in print and is, quite frankly, one of the best from the 80s. I'm talking about George Romero's Creep Show. Now, George Romero is, in fact, my favorite director. And when I think of George Romero, Creep Show is a movie that always comes right to the forefront of my brain. Thinking about it, George Romero and Stephen King coming together to make something is great. And this was during the time that Stephen King was doing a lot of blow. So I think that adds to a little bit of creativity. Not that I'm saying you should do blow. But in all seriousness, when I was thinking about what was still in print and realizing that this is still in print, and not only that, but at a fair price right now for about $26 on Amazon, I thought, I need to talk about this just for the fact that what if this thing goes out of print next week or, or a year from now or three weeks from now or a month from now or whatever. It's hard to say and you can never really know. But of all the things to still be in print, this has to be one of the best Scream Factory releases I've seen. It's got a really nice hard box. It comes with a nice booklet, comic book style, going over details about the movie and the making of. And now, of course, you get your Blu-ray where you can reverse your art and have that classic art on it. And I was like, wow, this is a release that uh, I just don't want anybody to miss out on. But it'd be remiss not to talk about Creepshow and review it because it is a really fun movie. So when you think about horror anthologies, there's a lot of great ones that come to mind. And Creepshow, I think, is arguably one that comes right to the forefront of a lot of people's minds because of how classic and good it is. This is arguably when George Romero is still at not only his peak, but was doing some of his best work. George drew some other great stuff after this, considering movies like Monkey Shines, Day of the Dead, and The Dark Half. But Creepshow has got to be one of the most fun horror anthologies ever. Going over some of the segments, it's hard to decide which one my favorite is. The opening of Father's Day is a nice way to open up the film of Creepshow and has this really fun tongue-in-cheek style of this old man yelling for his cake. He wants his Father's Day cake. And the poor daughter is just dealing with this crazed man. And she still goes and visits his grave even though their relationship wasn't very well. And what is she getting thanks for it? Boom! He pops out of the grave and you see this demented, nasty zombie skeleton coming out. It's a really cool look, and I love that the comic book stings transfer the movie back to swapping to another segment. It's really cool. I mean, the comic book thing, I wouldn't think would work as well as it did, considering I'm not a massive comic book reader or into that style. But it's one of my favorite things about the film, and those stings that go with it are really, really cool. You know, it'd be no surprise that Stephen King himself is in this, considering he wrote it, and he plays the, the farmer that gets that meteor, and then he turns into a big ball of grass and eventually has to kill himself kind of a dark ending it would have been cool to see tom atkins play this role too considering he wanted to do it but stephen king writing it and all that i mean he got his way but i would have remiss have seen tom tom atkins do this i mean he was great as the dad in the wraparound segments in this and he was really cool but man i think tom would have done a little bit better job and we probably would have been talking about that segment even more had Tom Atkins done it. But Stephen King still did a good job. Not my favorite segment of Creepshow, but still a really good one. Leslie Nielsen in Creepshow is one of my all-time favorite things ever. To tide you over, a story about a guy who is raging and jealous and envious that his wife and her new lover are happy together and he can't have any of it. So he goes and washes them up on the beach and digs holes, shoves their heads in there, and drowns them but the ending is a little cool it's kind of got that zombie twist to it with the really cool look of the characters and leslie nielsen's over the topness in this segment really makes it work i think this is probably my favorite to me you can't get much better in an anthology segment than to tide you over leslie nielsen just owns that segment and it's one of my all-time favorites when you think about practical effects and monsters that tom savini have made fluffy from the crate is probably one that comes to mind pretty quick while the crate isn't my favorite segment from creep show one i do think that the characters are really funny and all that and the humor holds that together pretty well and the tone of that one is great it's just a little slow for me at times but i gotta say the fluffy design is really cool and one of the best practical effects monsters Tom Savini's made. The crate is a fan favorite for a reason. Oh, and what a way to end Creep Show. All those cockroaches in that white apartment building. You know, this guy who's a germ freak and all this, lives isolated and all that. He gets this infestation of cockroaches, and they really used cockroaches. That is just gross, and I loved it. Uh, what a way to end off the segment. Could be actually my second favorite from Creep Show. And uh, it's a good one. I don't hear people talk about that one as much, probably because it's the last one. And there's been a lot of great memorable 
segments before this, but the final segment in Creep Show 1 with all those cockroaches is something to admire. They really went for it with that one, and I love that one. So that could be my second favorite of all from Creep Show. So look, I, I just wanted to talk about Creep Show because I don't think I ever have in depth before. I really love the movie. I think it's one of George Romero's best. I also think it's one of the best horror films from the 80s when you break it down. What a great combination, Stephen King and George Romero and Tom Savini. It doesn't get much better. But this release is really, really cool. You get a 4K scan of the original camera negative. You get new audio commentaries, new roundtable discussions with the cast and crew, an interview with costume designer Barbara Anderson, the colors of Creep Show, a look at the restoration of Creep Show, older audio commentaries with George Romero and Tom Savini, interviews with Michael Gornick, uh, John Amplis, property master, Master Bruce Allen Miller, makeup effects assistant Dar- Daryl Ferrucci, excuse me, and Tom Savini's behind the scenes footage and more. So this is a stacked release, and it's still in print, and it just blows my mind that this lovely, nice release is still in print, when I would have think it would have been out of print, I don't know, a year after it came out, like some Scream Factory titles do. So if you don't own this, really think it'd be worth it to go ahead and get it. I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link down below, and if you own Creep Show already and you're a fan, please tell me, what is your favorite segment? And do you like Creep Show 2 as well? And do you like Creep Show 3? I think I know the answer, but if you do, please let me know. But yeah, Creep Show, one of the greats, man. And if you haven't seen it, you're really going to love it. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> 